I'm Peter Block at TCT 2013, and way over there on the left wing <laughs> is Spencer King. Needs no introduction to my immediate left, both left wingers, I guess, uh, is Roxana Moran. And we now are going to talk about uh, the trial that everyone has been waiting for, the results of which uh, were just released. Spencer, the core valve. Core valve is the new kid on the block. Is it, is it not as good as the Edwards valve for aortic valve replacement? Where do we stand? Yeah, I mean, it's not a new kid on the block because, as you know, it's, it's tens of thousands of these have been implanted around the world. But uh, importantly, this uh, looked at a comparison of the extreme risk, the patients who are inoperable uh, with this valve and compared it to uh, uh, some uh, uh, controls that are, it's not a randomized trial, it's a registry, but looking at that, trying to find out uh, what the performance of the valve is. And the performance uh, turned out to be uh, a bit similar in terms of uh, stroke and mortality to what we'd seen in the, in the extreme risk of partners, I think, at, 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 at the uh, one year mm -hmm. time point. Uh, the uh, outcomes, a lot of outcomes we're interested in. One of them is uh, aortic uh, regurgitation, which we know now is associated with worse outcomes. That was not severe. There was just a tiny uh, bit of severe AI immediately after, uh, but the moderate AI and uh, mild began to uh, decrease over time. So it, it, going out to a year, the, the measures uh, uh, showed that there was a, a, a diminution in the amount of mitral, uh, of aortic insufficiency. Important to point out, that's a, that's a core valve evaluation. That isn't just the investigators saying that. The, yeah, the, yeah, it's a, so. core, uh, uh, it's a core lab uh, uh, core measure. Lab. Sorry. And, and the other thing that uh, we're interested in with this self-expanding valve, of course, is the it leans on the septum, and, and as you know, uh, heart block is one of the features. We don't know so far from the uh, report about the heart block. Uh, I don't know it. Uh, we would assume it's higher than we've seen with the uh, uh, balloon expandable valve. It has been in every other evaluation, but we don't know uh, what that is. So I'm interested to find that out about the trial. But the overall uh, results of this extreme high-risk group uh, are, 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 are not surprising. I think they're good. Uh, one good thing about it is, which I know you'll appreciate, Peter, is there's no uh, control group. Uh, and there's, and I'm saying that because we know that this extreme risk group of patients uh, without uh, valve replacement die. Yeah. And so uh, we can, uh, assume that a great many patients were saved in this uh, registry. Yeah, let me go to Roxana. Roxana, you know, 10,000 patients have been treated with this valve in Europe. Initially, it was the valve that everybody used in Europe, and now perhaps it's about 50 50 between Edwards and this valve and some of the newer ones. The United States has been lagging in their ability to understand what it can do compared to Edwards. So, where do you put this now in global perspective? What do you think this is going to do? for the core valve? First of all, I, I'm thrilled to see a second valve come and show very similar results in, in terms of the uh, hard endpoints of uh, death and stroke. Uh, the, uh, the, the overall rate was 25%, very similar to what we observed in partner uh, uh, high risk, extreme high risk. Uh, the stroke rates were comparable. If you just looked at the strokes, the mortality was comparable. What I wanted to see, as everybody else is talking about, is the pacemakers, but also this valve has a, uh, uh, as far as the femoral approach, it has a, a, a smaller profile compared to the original partner uh, study, and it would, be, it would have been nice to actually see the vascular complications and the bleeding complications. Were they able to actually achieve better results in that way? It's good to have the two valves be made available to our patients in the United States because, I, as we all know, there are certain patients who could use one valve versus the other. So I like, I'm very, very thrilled to see that we're making a step forward. And, and I think there'll be many, many more of these valves coming down, next generation valves. And I hope we can catch up to our colleagues outside of the United States. Yeah, well, in all fairness, the FDA has not yet approved this valve. This is just the first sort of cut at the data. I think we will learn a lot more over the next weeks as 
the data are teased out and we really understand what it is and what it is not. But the bottom line going forward, I think, is it gives us an opportunity now to make a choice. And the problem is, or I guess the question is, Spencer, do you think that the second generation valves, there's a lot of them coming through now, uh, are going to usurp all of these old valves, the old guys, or are they going to be just me too valves? You know, as we see papers coming through with various improvements, some of the things that are being addressed are very important. The aortic insufficiency is very important. It's a way to make sure that you don't do that. So it's a great interest in sizing and the valves and how this is all done. And as you know, there are uh, devices uh, to help prevent the aortic insufficiency. The durability of the valve is the other huge question. And right now, I would say for both core yeah. valve and Edwards valve, it's incredibly surprising to me that these things are holding up remarkably well. So that would have been one of my major concerns going in, and I'm very reassured in the intermediate follow-up we have that that's holding up. Yeah, well, I mean, the first the first trans catheter valve was put in 2003, and I guess the longest living patient is now almost eight or nine years out, and there is no deterioration of valve function. So what the engineers told us at the front end, this will never work, the surgeon said, you touch the valve and it's all going to come apart within two or three hours. We're just not seeing that. And I think that's good news going forward. Roxana, any last minute notes? Oh, I'm just thrilled to see we're making progress. So Roxana is happy we're moving ahead. And with that, I want to thank Spencer and also Roxana for joining me uh, at this coverage of TTT 2013.